Uh, there's another question by one of the persons on the WhatsApp. It's Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa Dr. Zakir Ankil. My name is Sabiya Tabassum from Dhaka, Bangladesh. Question How to become Allah's favorite Muslim? Huh? How can I become Dr. Zakir Naik? I'm a big fan of yours. Please pray for me so that I can become Dr. Zakir Naik and enter Janatul Firdos. We Bangladeshi people love you and we respect you. There's a similar question asked, so I've asked my team to club the questions which are similar so that more people are happy that I've asked the questions, that I've answered the question. A similar question is asked by Abdul Ghaffar, Ab Abdul Ghafoor Khan from Pakistan. Sir, I'm from Pakistan and I'm a great admirer of you. My profession is nursing and my question is how can I become like you? There's a third question similar to that. Assalamu alaikum, sir, I am Rahul Mia from India. I want to be a Dai, sir. Please tell me what should I do? I want to become like you and Sheikh Ahmad Dida. Regarding the basic question, all the three people have asked that, that all of them want to become a Dai like me. They want to enter Jalil Tarifri Let me tell you at the outset that it's not compulsory to become like me to enter Jalil Tarifri as far as I'm concerned, I, I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may he accept my efforts whatever he can. And I consider there are millions of people who are better than me in terms of knowledge, in terms of dawa. It is hadha bin fazhi rabbi. It is only because of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is only because of the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that whatever little bit I've achieved is because of him. And when I think of myself that there are, you know, hundreds of thousands of people who are more knowledgeable than me, how come people come for my talks? How come people listen to me on the Facebook, on the YouTube? I wonder. And then that reminds me, you know, that it is three criteria which I always say is important. Number one is that Allah says in the Quran, Surah Imran, chapter 3, verse 160, that if Allah helps you, none can overcome you. If Allah forsakes you, who is there then who can help you? So let the believers put their trust in Allah. Number one is having faith and trust in Allah. Number two, Allah says in Surah Al-Kabut, chapter number 29, verse number 69, if you strive in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will open up your pathways. Second is striving, struggling, hard work. Number three, Allah says in Surah Nahal, chapter 16, verse 43, and Surah Ambiya, chapter number 21, verse number 7, if you don't know, ask the person who is an expert. The third is the technique. So number one is Allah's help. Second is striving and struggling and hard work. Number three is technique. As far as getting Allah's help, the more you have faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more you worship Him, the more you believe in Him, the more you have trust in Him, Inshallah, he will help you. Imagine, I couldn't have dreamt in my wildest dream of speaking in front of 25 people. I could have dreamt of becoming the best surgeon in the world, the best doctor in the world. But in my wildest dream, I could not have dreamt of speaking in front of 25 people. Because, as many of you know, that I was a stammerer since childhood. When people used to ask me, what is my name? I said, my name is Zaza Zaza Zakir. So imagine what I cannot dream when I started doing dawah, when I went on the stage, I realized that I did not stammer. Most of the people when they go in front of public, they get cold feet. For me it was opposite. When I speak one to one, I used to stammer, but in public, my stammering vanished. Then later on, when I used to speak one to one to non-Muslims, even that time I did not stammer. With Muslims, I used to stammer. And slowly, slowly, Alhamdulillah, my stammering kept on reducing. And yet I stammer off the stage. Allah helps me, Alhamdulillah. And I'm sure most of the millions of people who are watching today, most of you may have been multiple times better than what I was when I started my dawah. You know, Allah can make such a person who is a stammerer, give lectures, where large numbers are attending, so why can't you do that? I don't think so, I've really done any great deed. Neither have I sacrificed something. People tell me, oh, I'm a fool that I left my medical profession. Some people come and say, oh, because you sacrificed your medical profession. There is no sacrifice. 
giving up my medical profession as compared to what Allah has given me in the field of Dawah, everything, people watching, the fame which, I, which was not the reason why we did it, the recognition, the head of the state meeting, me leaving the medical profession is not even the drop in the ocean and Allah gave me the ocean. So the basic thing we realize is that we should sacrifice the things that you love for the sake of Allah. If you sacrifice for the sake of Allah, if you take one step in the way of Allah, Allah will take multiple times more close to you. So number one is sacrifice, love Allah, trust Allah, have faith in Him and then ask an expert. As far as we have Dawa training programs where we had in the past, where we train people, but number one is help of Allah, number two is striving and struggling and last is the training. Training is not a must, I did not get training, it was Allah who helped me, that's the least important. And to go to Jannah of Firdos, follow the glorious Quran and follow the Sai Hadith, as much as you implement of the glorious Quran, as much as you implement of the Sai Hadith and the commandments of the Prophet and Allah, there are more chances that you will enter Jannah, inshallah Jannah of Firdos.